Inkscape is free, open source, and therefore based. Laser GRBL is free, open source, but only runs on Windows. Kind of based. Together, these two are what I think are the are ideal entry point level for some basic laser cutting. Uh, for any hobbyist, beginner person who wants to tinker around. And so I'm going to walk through a workflow on how to use these two together to create your own designs and then get them cut yourself. Here I have Inkscape open. So the first thing I find helpful to do is configure the document size to actually be uh, the dimensions of the work area that I'm going to use. Uh, so the way to do this is go into document properties and then you can change the height and the width here. So I'm going to change this to 300 by 300 because I'm using a 300 by 300 millimeter, 3 millimeter thick base width sheet. I'm just going to add grid here because I find it's helpful for visualization alignment. And I have that set. So now I can align my piece and I can figure out um, what is the best way to space it out on the document, center it, offset it from the laser cutting area, et cetera, et cetera. So I have that set up. I'm going to save my project here quickly. And so now I'm ready to start building out the design. And for working with a vector-based uh, approach like this, you're going to want to think about um, paths. So think about the vector-based approach. It maps nicely to laser cut because the laser, it traces out in paths. It moves in paths. Um, and so in this, in, in a vector-based design software like Inkscape, you create in paths. Everything is defined using paths and uh, vectors and mathematical equations and that maps very nicely. So all that's to say is that everything you do you want to be in the frame of mind of what's the path, how is the path going to look, how is a laser going to follow this and what's the movement and how that's going to translate to how it gets cut out. Um, so Path oriented is what you want to be thinking about as you're as you're designing. The next main thing you want to think about is colors. So, laser GRBL, for instance, allows you to filter by four different colors: uh, red, blue, black, green, and that helps you configure uh, your layers to set the right uh, power speed settings, so you can cut out a specific set of lines, engrave another specific set and have different configurations for the same file um, based on the color. And then some lasers, uh, if you just upload two of them directly in SVG with these colors, it'll know to do to like try and cut out a certain line or uh, based on the color or sorry, a certain path based on the color, etc. So think in paths and use colors to be able to segment out uh, what we want to engrave, what you want to cut, and specifically, like I said, for laser GRBL, I, uh, the ones to use are red, green, blue, and black. So, first, I want to start with my cutting layer. I want to create this like business card type of thing. So, I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and then I am going to make it a little thicker. So let's go up that up a little bit. So we got that. So this is going to be the exterior. I'm going to set my dimensions. And I'm going to align it more or less in the center of this sheet. So I have this all nice and set. Um, and so as I mentioned, this is what I'm going to, this is, this red is going to symbolize my cutting layer. This is what's going to get cut out. So everything in here is going to get cut out. Um, 
an additional step I'm going to take here is I'm going to add some uh, fillet to the corners here. So for this, we're going to search corners and path effects. And then let's set this to millimeters. And then, boom, let's, let's apply that. So now I've got the exterior cutting path defined. I want to also add some stuff in here that I want to engrave. So now I got to think about, you know, next layer. I kind of want to add, and I'm going to separate out the color as well in this case. So let's add a little shape, a little pentagon here. And since I want this to be engraved, I'm going to switch uh, the color here to be different. So for to switch the stroke, I'm going to hold Shift and click on this color here. And now I change that and the stroke. So now this I can seg separate out and, and configure different settings to get engraved. Now the key thing to note is that this right now is going to only trace out the exterior. But let's say I want to like fill this in and have it you know fully filled in engraved. Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically add in a path internally here that the laser can follow. Uh, along but nice and tight so that it'll overlap so that it will burn out all the material in here and then create this nice filled in effect. Um, so to do this we're first going to need to install an extension and wait where you're going to do that is you're going to manage extensions and there's multiple ways to do this this is the easiest way I found but once you got uh, your extension here search up hatch fill Right here, and then you'll install that, and then once it's installed, you'll see it in active packages here. And so this you can use now to basically add in a bunch of lines there that will that'll create a path for the laser to follow to fill it out. So then select your object, go to extension gallery, select or find search hatch fill, run that. And then configure the units you want. Let's go live preview. And just for a demo, I'm going to increase the spacing here. And so you can see those hatches and those lines coming across. And so I found 0 0.25 millimeters works pretty well to get it fully nice and filled in. So let's apply. And now that's all done. So that's how we created a filled effect. And you'll need to apply this to you know, any sort of object or thing that you add to your design. So the next thing I find is often um, common or, or, you know, a big thing to add is text. And it's very straightforward to add text. You just go in here, add text, you can configure what you want. Um, but the key thing to note about text is once you've added it, this is not a path yet. So the main thing you have to do is convert this to a path. So we've got a path, object to path, and then just like that, now it's a path. Now it'll actually show up when you import it into like laser GRBL. If you don't do that step, it actually won't show up. Um, so it's a common mistake. So just make sure you convert your text to path when you're done. And the key thing to note here is that the laser is going to follow this outline here. So you're not going to get filled in text like this. You're going to get this outline. And to get the same filled in text, you're going to have to do the same process I just did with this um, shape here. So you're going to, need to convert to path first, and then you can apply the same process as the shape. I'm not going to go through it here, but it's the exact same thing. And then you'll get the nice filled in text effect. So the last thing I find helpful to uh, kind of know how to work with and, and import and, and play with are images. So I have an image here. I'm going to paste it in. This is my image. And so now what we have to do is we have to take this image, we have to convert it to some sort of vector format uh, for it to be compatible and for it to work. So what you want to do first is you want to create I right click, trace bitmap, and you got that. And then basically in here, there's a bunch of things I've, you can play around with. Um, 
that can help you with this. So you got edge detection, you got uh, brightness cutoff, color quantization, you got a few things to try and, and do. So for this, I'm going to use brightness cutoff and let's, let's play around with it there. There we go. Okay. And for this, I'm not going to care too much about uh, this uh, background external. I'm just going to use this for now. And so it's nothing to play around with, um, but this is the simplest workflow I found to just try and get an image imported. So I'm going to hit apply. And then I've got this vectorized portion of the image now in here. So I want to delete this. And then this, I'm going to remove the stroke, but it's clicking, or sorry, the fill. And then I'm going to add stroke. I'm going to go black. And there's shift, add that. And so now I've got that in here. And so I'm going to use black for this example too, um, because uh, then that way I can also filter this out here and uh, configure different power settings. So let's say I want to engrave this like deeper um, than some other stuff I want to add to the design. Well, I can now I can configure this black uh, path to be at a weaker setting, whereas, for example, these things here can be at a stronger setting. And that, I, how, that's how I can make the differentiation. And I've got a few couple, I've got a couple different elements added. So I am like good to start moving on here. So now I'm pretty much ready to bring this into Laser GRBL and configure it for cutting. So I have Laser GRBL open here. And so now the key workflow of using that design that we just made is that we're going to want to essentially open the file filter by the color of paths that we kind of initially thought about ahead of time and built, and then uh, append and filter for different ones. And each time we append, we're going to configure different settings that will enable, that will, that will basically uh, set up the layer to cut, engrave, et cetera, et cetera. So it'll make more sense once I start working through it here. So we're going to go to the file, open, we're going to open what we just built here. And now you're going to see this, and then you get all these settings. And so this is where you're going to have to go, and you have to look at the specific machine you're trying to engrave on, the specific material, material you're trying to use, and the specific thickness of that material you're trying to engrave. Um, and then find, and you'll figure out the baseline of these values that will make sense for the different actions you may want to perform for that layer. So for me, I've got the Crowley Falcon 12 watt. Um, so I found the pr cutting and parameter settings here and we'll scroll down and I want to configure my cutting right now and I'm using base wood three millimeters so I'm going to see that I want to set 100% power and 300 uh, of speed millimeters per minute so I've got that figured out and these are not hard rules these are guidelines so you might have to tweak and play around with how specifically you want things to look, but this is a good starting point. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to set them up. And I've already got these preloaded in here from before. And a quick note I'll make is that I find it's good to set S min to be just a below S max to really make sure it's cutting through and um, doing a nice clean cut. And then constant power, just that. Uh, for simplicity, we just want constant. No need to change with that right now. So I want to select red because I want to configure this for cutting, which are, these are the settings for cutting right now. I'm going to hit create. And then as you can see, I've got my uh, red layer outline here. And you can see that the offset has also been imported in from when I configure my document. So here's the origin of where the laser will start. And you can see this has now been centered to be in the middle here. Um, so 
that's like the benefit of configuring document is you can get the offsets and kind of get the alignment a bit better um, and set up beforehand. And so now we're going to go here again, file. This time we're going to append file. We're going to open the same file, um, but this time we want to put it for engraving. So I already have looked ahead of time, and I know that for me, for my, uh, for my three millimeter base wood on this machine, for engraving I want 4,000 uh, border speed. Set S min to zero. S max to 40%. So that's my engraving setting, and I'm going to want to do this uh, for the blue layer here. So there we go. That's been added in. And you can see those hatches better, but here the laser will trace out. And then we're going to do this one more time. And this time, we're going to want to do it for the black layer. And let's just say for some purpose, we want this to be a much more shallower mm -hmm. engraving. So I'm going to drop it down 20%. And this is how I can configure and change the parameters between these different paths for the for this design. And there we have that. So now we have all those components added and ready to go. So from here, you can either do a quick save and then you can save this as G code. Uh, and then you can try and load that to your printer directly. Or we can try connecting to the printer, which I'll do now. Uh, and, and just upload and control directly from there. So I'm going to, I've plugged my laser in. I want to connect now. So I'm going to go over here. I want to hit connect. And there we go, we're nice and connected. And so a nice thing we can do here is we can actually align our material here directly. We can hit framing. And this will uh, move the laser uh, around this, this design and show you the approximate area of where it's going to be. So I'll hit framing here. And so now it's going to I can take a look at the laser and see where it's going to be relative to the material. You can also see how it's playing out where it is here on the screen directly in real time. So that's a nice little visual to get your material aligned. And now that I've verified that that looks good, the alignment looks good, I can just directly control and uh, start cutting from here.